This is Bishop George Murray. On behalf of your Catholic friends and neighbors in the Diocese of Youngstown, I invite you to join us for this celebration of the Holy Mass. Good morning and welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass. Today is the first Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant is Father Jim Corda, the pastoral director of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. I am John Pasternak from St. Rose Parish in Girard, Ohio. As we prepare to celebrate this Mass, let us remember in our prayers, Grace and Clarence Sulik. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It's nice to be with you this morning as we begin this holy season of Lent. So together let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, the priest shall receive the basket from you and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, my father was a wandering Armenian who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders, and bringing us into this country he gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil which you, O Lord, have given me. And having set them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm response, be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with, with me, Lord, Lord, when I am, I am in, trouble. in trouble. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, say to the Lord, my refuge and fortress, my God in whom I trust. Be, Be with, with me, me, Lord, Lord when, when I am, I am in, in trouble. trouble. No evil shall befall you, nor shall affliction come near your tent. For to his angels he has given command about you, that they guard you in all your ways. Be with, with me, me, Lord, when I am in trouble. trouble. Upon their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the asp and the viper. You shall trample down the lion and the dragon. Be, Be with, with me, me, Lord, when I am in trouble. trouble. Because he clings to me, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he acknowledges my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. I will deliver him and glorify him. 
Be with, with me, me, Lord, when, when I am in trouble. in trouble. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does scripture say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and is so justified, and one confesses with the mouth and is so saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew or Greek, the same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him, for everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It, is also, it also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. My friends, I can imagine a scene in which the disciples of Jesus were engaged in intimate conversation. And one of them opened up their heart and told of a personal struggle. Probably they were uneasy at first, admitting their struggle and risking ridicule with their peers. So finally Jesus puts them all at ease and told them the story of his own struggle and temptations. Personally, I find great comfort in that experience because it offers me strength in my own struggles with temptation. And there are several key thoughts in today's gospel that suggest that to me. First, everyone must face and deal with temptation. Now, this is not really an easy thing to understand, especially when we think about certain people, especially those we tend to idealize or place on a pedestal. We seem to think that true greatness exempts one from the problems of plain people like you and me. But the fact is that the opposite is true. Great strength and character always carry with it a greater burden of temptation. 
Listen to what the tempter said. Bow before me, and all this will be yours. Now, none of us ever has to wrestle with a temptation quite like that. But in simple ways, we give in to that temptation. The shoplifter is tempted to steal a wristwatch or a piece of jewelry, while the shrewd executive may be tempted to steal the entire store. If our Lord had to struggle with his own temptations, you can be certain that no one is exempt. Next, be assured that temptation in and of itself is not sinful. Remember that the New Testament said of Jesus that he was tempted in all ways that we are, but he never sinned. Temptation is really a common human experience. But it does not become sin until one gives into it and goes along with it. Now, recognizing that temptation is often deceptively subtle can also strengthen us. Now, evil does not always present itself in the form of a grotesque creature with horns and hooves and a pitchfork. St. Paul even said, Satan himself can be transformed into an angel of light. You know, Jesus was tempted to use his power to provide bread. Now, what could possibly be wrong with that? Surely it was a good thing to provide bread for those who were hungry. But Jesus saw through that temptation. He recognized that we do not live on bread alone. He realized that a full stomach and fullness of life are not one in the same thing. Temptation will come to you and me in the same subtle ways. And dishonesty will guise itself as shrewd business dealings. Sexual infidelity will call itself free love. Gossip can be passed along under the pretense of prayerful concern for a friend. And a nasty temper can always be an excuse for an ethnic weakness. Or better yet, camouflage as righteous indignation. Don't look for the serpent slithering in the ground or the devil with horns. Evil comes to us in reasonable and subtle ways. Finally, I think we can learn and find strength by sharing one another's struggles with temptation. You know, Jesus shared his struggle to give us strength in knowing that he too was tempted. Maybe he's trying to teach us that it's okay to be human. You know, the church is not for those who have an easy way of life or those who are without struggle or temptation. The church is for those who need the grace of God. If we would but share our common griefs and and move behind our masks, then we can draw an incredible power from God and from one another. And we can ultimately win a victory just as Jesus did. There is an available source of power which God offered to Jesus for the living of his life, for the struggle with his temptations, and ultimately the facing of his death. That same energy is available to you and to me. The question is not, will I be tempted? The question is, will I draw from the deep wells of resource that are mine in my relationship with God to face the temptation? Together now, let us profess the faith that we all share. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Humbly now let us present to God our special petitions. For Pope Francis and all the leaders of our church, as they accompany us through the desert during this Lenten season, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations resist the temptations of power and instead be of service to the people who have been entrusted to them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing for the Easter sacraments, as they seek to cleanse their hearts and be open to God's grace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who lack the daily bread they need to live, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For strength against the tempter and for forgiving hearts toward our sisters and brothers during this jubilee year of mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God in heaven, you give us strength during our struggles in everyday human life. As we seek to avoid the temptations in this life, one day welcome us to the fullness of peace in your eternal presence. We make this prayer in the spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Give us the right disposition, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ your Son. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal Feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven, heaven and earth are, are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the, in the highest. highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim, proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, and, and profess, profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until, until you, you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Paul, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let us share with those around us a sign of peace. Peace, John. Christ be with you. God Thank bless you. you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ. Amen. Blood of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you.